Chapter 19 of the book of Genesis tells us a very interesting story most of us know as Sodom and Gomorrah. In this story, we see two angels come to the city of Sodom. They're in the town square when a man named Lot notices them and says, My lords, come to my house tonight and uh, be safe from anything that could happen. And the angels say, No, 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 we must spend the night in the town square. Well, Lot says, Please, my lords, come. I will take care of you. Everything will be well. After much persistence, the angel said, okay. They went with Lot and they had a nice meal. Not too long later, they're getting ready to turn in for the night when a pounding comes at the door. And here all the men of the city, both young and old, surround the house and demand to Lot saying, bring out those two men so we may have sex with them. Lot, disturbed, obviously, comes outside and says, No, men of the city, don't do this vile and wicked thing. Um, The men of Sodom get furious and say, Look at this foreigner amongst us being our judge. Who are you to tell us anything? We are going to do even worse to you than we're going to do to those two men. In this time, the angels reach out the door, grab Lot, yank him back in the house, slam the door, and caused blindness to come over all the men of the city who sought to rape them. If we keep reading, we know that Lot is taken out by the angels away from both cities, Sodom and Gomorrah, and God sends down fire and brimstone judgment upon the homosexuals and the violent, killing everyone there. My question is, how does a place like Sodom and Gomorrah get to be a place like Sodom and Gomorrah? Does the devil just take possession of the land, snap his fingers, and all of a sudden people are vile and wicked? Or does it happen in another way? In my own life, I can sadly testify to how the devil works. And if I look back as a teenager, I remember my friend and I, we would sneak outside. We'd play a game called Ding Dong Ditch. We'd run up to someone's house, knock on the door, run across the road, hide in the weeds, and just watch the people come look for us. We'd laugh and have fun, snickering and everything else, and did that for months. And after a while, it began to lose its luster. We wanted to do something a little more exciting. So when the people would come out, look for us, just when they were about to go in the house, we'd yell something uh, obscene to them just to make them come back out and look again. And we would laugh and have fun and just a good old time. After a while, this got a little boring. So when the people would come to the door, we would throw eggs at them and then run off and be chased and just, just had a great time doing those things. After a while, we wanted a little more, so we started slashing people's tires, shooting out windows of BB guns, all kinds of terrible things, uh, just just to have a blast, and we did. We had a, a great time doing it, but even that lost his excitement. So we started throwing rocks and eggs at cars, and just to have people chase us, doing lots of damage. That got a little boring too, so we started egging cop cars, just so we could have that thrill, that adrenaline, that rush. Um, did that for a while. Then we decided we wanted to become more profitable. So we'd break into cars and we'd steal, you know, change, cigarettes, uh, tapes, whatever we could find. You know, we would take these things and after a while we wanted more. So we would bring a hacksaw with us and we would literally cut apart people's dashboards, extracting their um, tape decks, their, their radios, their speakers, anything we could get of value, we would rip out of the cars. Eventually, we even advanced to breaking into homes, stealing whatever we could find of value in people's homes. I tell you these things just to show the progression. What started out as a small, innocent game in our own eyes, the devil (laughs) played us like fiddles, and eventually we were full-blown criminal activity, doing terrible things. My friend actually kept on going uh, and spent five years in prison because of these things. And I'm 40-some years old now. I look back, I'm so thankful I don't do those things anymore, but there's a lesson there. Uh, When I was young, I saw homosexual activity as something that pretty well the world saw as a shameful abomination. You know, they go to the Word of God to see what how we should uh, see homosexuality. And and we use the word of God to determine these things. Now, 
things have been passed, legislation, and got the the movement got more and more power and more finances, and now it's now it's uh, legal to be uh, gay married, and you have all kinds of lesbians, transgenders, and people doing. Um, you know, just drag queen story time to children, and and it's advancing and advancing and advancing. It has gone so far in the last thirty years. It blows my mind to see how far this movement has gone. And I want you guys just to see just the things that are knocking. There's other uh, movements that are just wanting to have their day in the sun as well. Uh, I have seen something recently called the trans age movement. It's a movement where a 50 year old man can decide, hey, I want to self-identify as a 12 year old child. And you know what? I can play 12 year old child games. I can have fun like a 12 year old child, dress like a 12 year old child, just do everything a 12 year old child does, including date 12 year old little girls. And he justifies this by saying, hey, This is how I'm made. This is who I am. God made me the way that I am. And if you look back at the homosexual movement and and all the excuses they use, they often say, hey, God made me this way. God gave me these desires. Look Look at nature. Look at the animal kingdom. Even they practice homosexuality there. Guess what? People who practice trans age, any kind of uh, bestiology, polygamy, all these things can use these exact same excuses. Meanwhile, our land is declining more and more to the likelihood of Sodom and Gomorrah. And I just had to ask the church, listen, friends, we have been sitting back on the pews long enough. We've been accepting things. You're scared to be called homophobic. You're scared to be seen as judgmental. You are allowed to stand up for righteousness. You are allowed to stand up for truth and not hate someone. You're allowed to proclaim the word of God and not hate someone. If we continue to sit back and allow the devil to take more and more and more and more land and more ground, guess what? We cannot proclaim the promises of God in our land. We can't can't proclaim the, the protection and the safety God gives our land if we allow the devil to take it all. So I am making a plea to the church out there to read the Bible. Don't let culture dictate what we are all about. Don't let culture say, well, homosexuality is legal. It's good. It's a loving relationship. Let the Bible determine what we believe, not culture. My concern is we're living in a land that is going so far the other way that we're allowing ourselves the next Sodom and Gomorrah. We're already part way there. Homosexuality is good in our eyes. I promise the men in Sodom and Gomorrah did not think they were doing wickedness. And that's my plea today. Proclaim the word of God and be bold and strong. Don't let the devil take your land.